Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the Access to Trader.com nightly wrap up show. So, what the hell happened today, right? So, We've been talking about for four or five days, right? Three, four days. Again, if you've been watching this broadcast nightly, you've been hearing me talking about the greed index, right? The greed index, people are willing to chase anything. Again, you can see that daily by you know, some of these really aggressive biotechs uh, that you know are going up phase one, phase two data, you know, 400, 500, 1,000 percent. And people are not paying t attention. They're just not paying attention to what the reality of trading is, what your reality is could be if you are missing all the signals of reality. I think that's the best way to describe it. And for three, four days, all I've been saying was that people are getting to the point that irresponsibility is right in front of them, okay? They, they are putting themselves in the position to tackle risk instead of looking for reward. And again, when you have a linear market, it doesn't take a lot for the rug to be pulled. Now again, it's not about being right, okay? It, 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 trading is not about being right. It doesn't make a difference. Like I say this every single day uh, in the live webinar, on the videos, that, you know, especially you guys have been watching. Um, you know, I don't care about being right, okay? It's having an opinion and making sure that that opinion is played out through technical analysis, through confirmation. So again, the fact that the market got pulled today, I, you know, I'm not saying to go, oh, I, well, I told you guys it's going to get pulled. No, no, it's reality. It, it's 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 gravity. The key is, okay, did you go out to, to the crapper, right? Did you go out and take a sandwich and watch the queues collapse, literally collapse uh, intraday on, um, on China news, right? And the China news talking about, well, well, this, you know, we might not get a deal done till maybe after uh, at some point in 2020. And the most amazing part about today's, uh, today's sell-off, right? About today's sell-off. And again, I don't want to call that a sell-off, but it was a very, very, uh, aggressive rug pull in the middle of the day. I mean, really, really aggressive. You saw the queues going from 203.40s uh, all the way down to 200. That's an aggressive pull. And that's what we wanted to kind of avoid. It wasn't the point of, well, you all want to be right. I told you this was going to happen. No, no, it's nothing to do with that. It's putting yourself in a position that if you are trading from the long side, you're not trading from the long side as stocks are going linear, 30, 40, 50, 60 points. You're trying to find the best value from either bottom wedges that are confirming or the middle tier that are confirming that are playing catch up to the bull market sentiment. So when you looked at today's action and when we woke up this morning, and again, I think the bulls did a great, great job today. Uh, again, they could have easily, you know, they lost the five day moving average on uh, the China news. When Powell started speaking, again, the news, you, you could interpret the news any way you want, okay? I think the Bulls did a great job today, not only reclaiming the 10-day moving average, but reclaiming the five as well. And this is bullish. This is very, very bullish. But again, what I wanted to do, and I think we accomplished that today, because I think I think majority of us were, I know I was flat by lunchtime. Um, we kind of avoided this. We kind of wanted to do what we had to do in the morning and kind of avoided the afternoon. Because if you guys, were, if you guys noticed in the last year, the biggest curveball, the, the, like really the biggest uh, wrench that hits, hits the bicycle spoke, it, it's always in the afternoon. It's always some sort of curveball that comes in the afternoon. For some reason, these headlines are avoided till the afternoon. And we got a pretty big headline today. We got a big headline. And the first thing that I saw was when the Dow went from, you know, down 20 to down like 100, I said, well, this is the first day I can remember that the market is not rallying back. It's not snapping back right away. And the first thing I said was, you know, we don't want to buy any dips here. We don't want to buy any dips because, again, the market's gone linear. It doesn't take a lot for the market to come down five, six, seven hundred points. Luckily for the bulls, it didn't happen. OK, I, I, again, I didn't see any value on the short side off these two candles because, again, number one, we had the headline. The last thing you want to do is play play superhero on a headline. But I knew we also had the Fed coming up at two o'clock. So I kind of wanted to kind of get everybody out the way and see what happens next. 
the, the one bad thing that happened today was on this close, and, and again, if you've been following just kind of my, even my Twitter account uh, for the last couple of hours, I, you know, I, I said the close will be very, very important. The reason I said that, because any close below the 10-day moving average was going to get it down to uh, next round, you know, rounds of support, and that didn't happen. So uh, the market didn't sell off into the close. The market kind of didn't rally off the close, kind of put it, you know, put it in perspective of what I see here. But the bulls did a good job of reclaiming the 10 and reclaiming the five-day moving average so that is bullish okay going into tomorrow you kind of want to give the bulls the benefit of the doubt the problem is and again for all you guys who trade beta uh like i do the problem is the majority of the names are in between the channels right they're not here they're not there they're in between the channels so it's going to take a lot more work for them to honor the technical view that we have on the close to kind of confirm tomorrow's prices and when you saw that, we, we kind of started seeing that this morning, right? Uh, first thing I talked about uh, in the live webinar was, well, again, be careful for any potential rug pull. Don't buy anything overextended. But the second thing I talked about was we might have to be a little bit more patient, okay? And if you go in, uh, if you look at our pivots, okay, if you look at our pivots uh, for the day, you'll kind of see that. Uh, let me see where I said that. Yeah, so after, we'll talk about these pivots in a second. So I turned around and I said, we could see a quiet session today based on what I'm seeing on these early channels. Stay patient. Now, again, obviously, I put in a whole bunch of things uh, in the pivot feed, obviously, in the live webinar. But we, we kind of got that sense that, well, maybe it will be a more quiet session because look at the channels, right? Everything was in the, in the, in the top of the range, excuse me, right in the middle of the ranges. And it needed works, kind of the same scenario that we're seeing going into tomorrow's session. So the day started out uh, pretty slow, right? We, pretty slow. We sat there and waited and waited and waited. Again, these are all, again, there's nothing edited here. Th th this is what it is, okay? For all you guys who are seeing this, who are on the live feed, you guys know there, there is no editing. This is it. These are these are pivots. They're either going to work or they're not going to work. Uh, the most important part is how much value confirmation there's going to be. So the day started out very, very slow. And my attention today was on Netflix at the open. Um, you know, it, I, we had a good trade in this thing. Well, what's today? Today's Wednesday. Was it yesterday or the day before? The day before. The day before, I had a really, really good pivot on Netflix. I thought it really needed to reclaim that 306 level to get the 309. Okay. Um, so I was watching Netflix and everything was in the middle of the channels and things started getting better and better and better. And Netflix kind of woke up. Okay. But what I saw from Netflix today, I, I didn't like. There was actually a sneaky pivot on Netflix. Right, there was a sneaky pivot on Netflix at 303. Now, I didn't take this pivot. The reason I didn't take this pivot here was it was trading at a 50, 60 cent spread, 100 share lots. And I was like, look, I'm not playing that game. And the next thing you know, this thing just absolutely explodes. So we talked about this 306 pivot, and it still was trading really, really crappy. So I bought some Netflix. Uh, I bought some Netflix off that 306 break. It went to like 307 and change, right? Went to 307 and change. And I sold, I sold, what the hell, how much did I sell? I sold about a third, or was it half? I don't remember now. Uh, anyway, it, was, it didn't make a difference. I think I sold half. I think I sold half just because how crappy it was trading. Um, so I sold up half about 75, 80 cents, and then the stock started coming in. And make a long story short, it came in and lost the five minute view. So I literally made a cup of coffee on the trade. So I wound up making like, uh, 75, 80 cents on the upside and to the downside, the rest I sold down 65, 70 cents. So I, I, I literally broke even on the trade, just made a cup of coffee. So I bought it on the remount, right? I bought it on the remount again. And this time the stock goes up another dollar and change, right? And then it stalls out again. So I wound up, I wound up taking sales. So I made some money on it, but I took some sales. The rest I broke even on. So I was like, oh, it's just trading really, really crappy. It keeps on getting uh, it keeps on getting rejected on supply. You know what? Let me be safe and sorry. And I was, again, I was right because, again, we wanted to see the bigger measure potential off supply, which we didn't get. Again, I still like it for tomorrow. But, again, you could see. And, again, it, it was just it was just so painfully obvious they just couldn't get the stock going because, again, of the wide spreads. I didn't like that. And, again, I always say uh, every single day, it's so much better to be safe and sorry than overstay your walk and watch the stock again like it did. Uh, come in, you know, come in four, four, you know, four and a half dollars. You just don't want to do that. Again, we're not in the praying business. We have to see order flow and see who is in control of the pivot. So it's very, very important. But again, in the bull trades, I did okay, but nothing, nothing that I even wanted to uh, talk about. Uh, Facebook. We'll talk about the pivot in Facebook. Uh, Square actually had a nice move here. We talked about 66, 80, 67 needs to build. 
Uh, again, it, it did fine. It, it wasn't a huge move, but again, here's a 66. Uh, here was a 6680, right? Here was a 6680, 67. Uh, it went to 6775 before, again, the announcement. Again, this is the biggest trade in the world? Not at all. But again, the stock is going the right direction. Uh, PDD, uh, again, not a big move. Uh, PDD off this uh, move, you know, give like a 50, 70 cent move uh, off that opening range. Here's the opening range here, 3075. Uh, put in like a 50, 60 cent candle, then a really, really aggressive reversal. Uh, after that, uh, URBN didn't get through, uh, 2390. Here's the setup on URBN. I actually still like it for tomorrow. I just never got down there to test these levels. You can see the 60 minute view of this thing looks pretty decent. Uh, once it starts building below 2390, it should go. It never got there, obviously, this morning. Uh, BYND never confirmed that 76. KNSA never confirmed the 10. So you can see it was a very, very not aggressive morning, right? And I said, hey guys, just stay patient. We'll get something. Things will get better. Things will get better. Uh, even this crap, again, Crone, there was actually a pivot there, 609, 697. It went exactly to supply. Again, this is why I don't trade these small cap stocks. It just doesn't make a difference. And I kept on saying, we could see a quiet session here. Again, I don't love anything. Let's wait, let's wait, let's wait. Uh, Boeing, I went towards the close. Uh, didn't There was no trade on this thing as, at all. Uh, but we talked about the 370. We talked about the 370 here. Uh, and it went to like 371. I think that's going to be the big level for tomorrow. Maybe it reclaims that. Maybe it doesn't. So you can see very, very slow. And then slowly but surely, things started moving up. Again, it's not how much you trade. It's how much you trade properly or how many you trade properly. It's not a, it's not like pissing contest. You don't need to be right. Um, so here it was. Here's how the day started. I mean, really got aggressive. Uh, Facebook, uh, 1980, uh, 9880, 99 sneaky area. If it builds, can wake up. Again, here's a sneaky area, guys. Again, it's not about the top or the bottom of the channels. It's about the sneaky areas. You can see here it got rejected several times here. Uh, 19880, 19879, uh, and it broke. It broke, and again, the market started appreciating. Uh, I thought there was a shot it could get to 200, went to like uh, 9960s, and again, that headline came out and took everything down. Again, there's nothing, there's nothing point of guarantees. It's all about taking sales on the way up, especially if the market is contracting or uncertain, and using break even as a stop. Just that as a pure prudence, okay? As a pure prudence, again. Uh, Netflix started finally going, uh, takes them on the way up. Here is the trade. Uh, here is the trade of the day, definitely the trade of the day. And this thing went, it just went lost its mind. Um, I personally don't remember the last time that I put on a NVIDIA trade, okay, that went straight up, okay? I, I don't remember the last time. Um, matter of fact, for all you guys who do trade NVIDIA, you kind of know it could spike up 50, 60 cents, come back into the area for a remount, right? Come back into the area for a remount. And then again, if a headline comes that we don't want, we're kind of dead, right? We're kind of dead and the trade kind of goes to shit really, really quickly. But this one, it just went straight up, okay? Which is incredibly odd. Uh, this obviously made my day. Uh, 209 needs a strong build. Now, again, if you don't trade pivots and you don't understand where the 209 came from, again, if you're looking at one minute channels, how can you possibly know why 209 was significant. You could talk about 213.35, which, which was the pre previous high from a couple of days ago, but why is 209 important? Again, this is what we talk about, having as much data as possible. So you can see here, right here, the supply here was 208.94, 208.92, uh, 208, uh, 208.83. So I said, you know, I got long at 209 and just exploded, just, just, just explode. This is one candy, it just absolutely exploded. I said, there's a shot at 211.50s. Right, 209 and 211.50. That's okay. 209, 211.50s. Forget about 211.50s. This thing just exploded through, just exploded through, and eventually put an eye of 214.50s. Okay, just absolutely insane move. And again, will you get that once in blue moon? Absolutely. Um, so I started making sales on the first spike, and I made my last sales in the 210, uh, 210.20s, 210.30s, because I said, my God, the video doesn't even spike like that off one candle. How can it, you know, it was just amazing, especially the market started coming in. So look, did I leave some money on the table? Gladly, okay, gladly. Again, it's not about, uh, it's not about guessing the closing price. It's about kind of assessing the information you have in front of you and making intentional, intelligent decisions. So I was happy with that. I was good with that. Um, so I was fine. I was absolutely fine. Uh, Facebook spiked up that we talked about. 
Uh, again, the recent highs, this thing exploded. Square uh, did fine as well. Uh, remember, again, remember, uh, and, I, and I started talking about it. Remember all the gravity talk in the last few days? Well, yada, 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 the market kind of implodes down. Um, and that's the most important part. Uh, we also had uh, a great job for all you guys who uh, also took um, shop. Okay, I didn't put this on the Twitter feed. Okay, I did not put this on the Twitter feed. Um, I actually put it on my regular feed. Again, what I'd like to do, uh, what I like to do is also, um, you know, just put once in a while something in real time for everybody to see. So here was shop. We talked about. I tweeted this thing out at 2:21. I said, "Look, I, I think there's a there's a shot. This thing gets to uh, 2:26, right? And it went right to 2:25 and change. I know, I know a lot of you guys caught the trade very, very well. So it actually turned out to be a pretty good day. Uh, going into tomorrow, again, I am I am cautiously I'm cautiously bullish. Okay, I'm cautiously bullish. Uh, Roku is still very, very strong. Netflix is still very, very strong. Hell, Shop is still very, very strong. Uh, Tesla, you know, I have a mixed feeling on Tesla. You know, we'll talk about that tomorrow night on uh, tomorrow morning at Morning Strategy. Um, but I like some ideas. So let me give you guys some ideas uh, that I do like uh, for tomorrow's session. Okay, get you guys uh, rolling for tomorrow. And then everything else we'll obviously talk about uh, talk about it morning strategy. So let me give you guys some names uh, that I do like. I like this MDLA. Okay, I like this MDLA. This is a nice long base, guys. Look how long this base is here, right? If this thing starts confirming this base above 32, 32 and a quarter, this thing can go. This is a long distribution since the end of August, the start of September. So this thing starts building 32, 32 and a quarter. I think this thing can can rip, can absolutely rip. So let's keep an eye on that uh some other names that i do like that are not beta i still like this congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading you're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire want daily trade ideas directly from dan straight off his personal watch list unlock our free ps60 vault where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session Click the link in the description to get started today.